Nine ball. Nine on the spot, three point rule. These rules exist for the sole purpose of making the break much more difficult to make balls and still control the cue ball. Most of the breaks involving the nine on the spot either involve smashing the rack from the middle or cutting the one ball to the side pocket and zigzagging the cue ball and trying to get lucky for shape. And there are some ways to still try to make that wing ball, but none of them include controlling the cue ball and still satisfying the three point rule until now. I am here to tell you that I may have just discovered a really obscure break that pretty much negates the entire reason for its existence, which is to deter players from easily making a wing ball and still playing shape on the one. Well, guess what? I think I figured out how to do just that. Don't believe me? Check it out. Here I've put together a string of breaks where I demonstrate I can actually do this. Just take a sec and watch it. Now, I tried every which way to come up with a break for this format that still made a ball. The goal is to not make the one, play shape on the one, and still satisfy the three-point rule, and I could not for the life of me figure out a way to do it. And then I tried this. Take a look at my bridge hand. Not only am I elevating, but I'm doing it on top of the rail. The cue ball is uncomfortably close to the side rail on the head string. Now, something about the set of factors here in this break actually push balls towards that corner pocket, specifically the wing ball, when it normally would track above the corner pocket. Now, I'm still refining this break and learning about it and figuring out why it works, but I can tell you what I've learned so far. In general, the reason this break works is because I have found a way to force balls towards that corner pocket and either make the wing ball clean or kiss it off a ball or another ball gets kissed into that corner. But there's a lot of traffic down there and it usually ends up pretty good. Um, I do make some balls in other pockets sometimes, but that's not the focus. The focus is that corner pocket. Now the one ball should come above the side pocket, back down towards the head rail, and then up a bit uh, by that corner pocket that you're breaking from. I will say that getting enough movement on the one ball seems to be the hardest part of this break. So how do you do it? Give me the details, Nate. Firstly, setting up the cue ball placement is a crucial part of why this break works. It can't be too far off the rail or you won't consistently make the wing ball. Place the cue ball about a quarter ball off of the rail on the head string. I've had success with it a bit closer and a bit farther from the rail, but more or less this seems to be a pretty good position to still be able to cue your tip placement and be far enough to the side of the table to where the, the break will actually work. Also, you wanna make sure that you are elevating to get that tip placement right. This part is pretty tricky because the rail kinda of gets in the way of cueing comfortably, but generally, I try to hit it center ball, maybe a little bit higher than center. Now, a lot of folks would wanna aim a little bit low here to try to keep the cue ball in the middle of the table, but the problem with aiming low is that throws the one ball into the side pocket and we don't want that. We wanna play shape on the one. And on the other hand, if you have too much top spin, then that gets more height on the cue ball because of uh, deflection and other factors involved when you strike the cue ball. Um, and it also means that you're probably gonna lose the cue ball more. Uh, it may go into the head rail or it may drift forward a bit. Honestly, I've had some success doing that. Uh, it, it works out okay. So it's, it's better than having a little bit of draw on the ball, but still, I try to keep the, the cue ball movement to a minimum. Now you wanna aim at the one ball really, really full. If you're gonna cut it, if you're breaking from the left on the left side, if you're breaking from the right, right side. You don't wanna cross the rack because then the break just doesn't work. But you also don't wanna cut it too much because then the one ball will go into the side pocket and that defeats the whole purpose of this break. Now, keep in mind that this break is much more like a jump shot than anything else. What's most important here is that you time the landing of the cue ball uh, where the one and the slate meet. So you wanna hit the slate uh, and the one ball pretty much at the same time as the cue ball is coming down. 
uh, or you want to hit the slate just in front of the one and then you get a little bit of a pop. Not a huge pop, not a Shane Van Boning pop, but you know, a little mini baby pop is nice. The wing ball tends to go in uh, more often than not. It also helps you control the cue ball if you land more at the same time. Uh, the cue ball has a lot less motion on it and you can control it better. If you get too much pop, then you get less control uh, and the balls don't really go where you want them to. What you really don't want to do is land on top of the one ball. If you land on top of the one ball before hitting the slate, then what happens is the, the ball track lines are really unpredictable and it's hard to control. So then this brings me to the speed. I'm usually hitting the balls here at about 14 or 14 and a half miles per hour. Not a soft break, but definitely not a freaking crush them break. And now this ties in with the timing of the hit, but if you're getting problems with the one ball uh, coming around and getting stuck on the head rail, um, I would not, I repeat, I would not suggest hitting the rack harder. That does not, that does, that does not accomplish what you want for this break. Balls don't go where you want them to go if you hit them too hard. It's much easier to get movement on the one. It's hard to explain, but you gotta hit it sweet, not hard. And I don't mean soft, I mean sweet, right, correct. And last but not least, what really impacted my success for this break is actually the type of stroke that I use. I got a lot of varying results just changing the type of stroke. Now everyone's got a different stroke, so I would just experiment trying different things with your stroke. Maybe it's dipping the cue, rising the cue, uh, short follow through, long follow through, jabby or smoother. Just experiment until something works. For me, I've noticed that uh, I need like a, a, a slightly quicker backswing, uh, and I also have to incorporate a stroke slip uh, or throwing my cue, which is something I do normally anyways, so I was comfortable with it. But I got a lot of success once I started doing that, and those, those the wing ball started flying into that pocket. I don't know why it is, but when I'm not holding the cue at impact, the balls seem to go where I want. So uh, yeah, there it is. A new way to break nine on the spot, play shape on the one, satisfy three point rule, make a ball, all the things. I will admit it's not super easy, but once I sort of understood what was happening and started practicing this, it, it became pretty consistent. And I would much rather have control and consistency in a break than trying to get lucky with a cut break or smashing the balls. So let me know what you guys think. Just give it a try, go for it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, please let me know. I would like to see what other people's success rate is for this break. Uh, yeah, happy shooting, y'all.